Today's video is sponsored by Ramen Noodles. You are watching Disrupt. We've seen plenty of concepts uh, and demonstrations in the last decade about exoskeletons. Uh, these include light exoskeletons tailored to, say, industrial settings, but the full body robotic exoskeletons like uh, we see in Avatar or science fiction are a bit rare, which makes the Sarko suit recently shown off at CES that much cooler to look at. But like all things in robotics, practicality matters as much as vision. So it's worth asking, will anyone actually buy and use this thing? Is it more of a concept? Well, the company seems to be one of the firsts that are actually checking a few of those boxes. For one, it's user-friendly. According to Sarkos, it only takes a few minutes for the uninitiated to strap in and get up to speed. Feeling comfortable doing work with the suit takes a few hours, according to them, so this is thanks to a high degree of sensor-based automation that allows the robot to seamlessly match its user's movements. So again, we're, we're using biology as the base for advancements in technology. It's almost like this hybrid between man and machine. We are on one side enhancing our human biological ability to lift something that is infinitely more weight than we can normally carry. Almost like a mouse, almost like a, 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 an ant, right? But on top of this, we also have the ability to use our brain. So rather than relying on, say, a AI robot to think on the job and come up with uh, unique ways to fix solutions, say, in a warehouse, we can rely on the best AI, our brains. I think this could introduce a new resurgence of working out the mind, ensuring our minds are operating on the best hardware so that our robotic upgrades can operate at the best frequency. It's almost like the, um, the example given by athletes, you know. The greatest master of body, the greatest master of mind and body. In last episode, I asked you what positive and or negative consequences may occur as a result of creating a one-to-one -one simulation of the human material experience. Captain Tobo said, if we can create a virtual world that's better to live in than reality, what would be the point of advancing our real world? There are many things that would only be possible or at least way more easy to achieve in the digital world. And if we try to match up these two worlds, the real world would fall behind fast. Maybe instead of having two similar worlds, our digital world could be driven by technology, while our real world driven by nature. Thanks for the answer, Captain Tobo. Today's question, what other applications of exoskeletons may you see in the future? Thanks for watching.